You are listening to Beyond the Verse, a Star Citizen podcast. A show dedicated to Cloud Imperium games, Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Whether you fight, explore, unite, and or trade, we bring you news, updates, interviews, reviews, and analysis. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a pour of Radagast, and join us as we go Beyond the Verse. Launch sequence activated. Hello, friends, and welcome to Beyond the Verse, Star Citizen podcast with your host, Solus. Uh, and also, welcome in to 2024. And for you nerds out there just like me, 2954 as we get into a brand new year of Star Citizen. There is a lot to get excited about, a lot to look forward to this year, a lot of predictions, maybe a little bit of PTSD on what we can trust that we've heard and what we've seen, Um, but we have a lot of content to get into. A little bit of looking back, episode 39, I went into a full deep dive of every patch that happened last year from the features to the ships um but we didn't really get into predictions for this year this is by design this is on purpose because what better way to bring on the new year to look into the future for the next 51 weeks than to bring the juggernauts of the content creation community himself the man, the myth, the legend. There is no way, you have no idea who this is. If you've been around the game for a week, you've heard his content, you've seen his content, ladies and gentlemen, Space Tomato. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> I am flattered. What a <laughs> what an introduction, dude. Thank you, I appreciate it. I uh, Absolutely. I'm certainly happy to be part of this content community. Um, I've never covered a game before, but like being a part of Star Citizen Creators, we're a bunch of pretty friendly folks, yeah. talented people, high quality, uh, dedicated people. I mean, you can't cover Star Citizen without being <laughs> dedicated, right? So you gotta be able to, to take, be here, dude. you gotta be able to take it across the chin, uh, to be yeah. a content creator in Star Citizen. You Six. really do from, <laughs> from both people and, and the company, but, yep. um, thank you for having me on. It's, yeah. it's a pleasure. Right. I've heard of and seen the Beyond the Verse podcast, and uh, I know you guys are doing some fantastic stuff helping with getting more people involved in Star Citizen. Not enough people who know about all the podcasts going on here, so yeah. happy to spread the word, man. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's an honor to have you. I'm working on my introductions. I think they're getting longer uh, as I have more and more guests on. I spent like uh, a minute introducing Galactica, so next yeah, time it'd be five minutes. You know, <laughs> it's like it's like at some point you're going to end up like uh, Daenerys, where it's just title after title yes. after title after title you just That's bunch right. of introduction detail and yeah people people will just sit there they know they yeah. know they'll wait <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so so what i so what i usually do is i go into the like the why why am i bringing space tomato on um i think it's it's pretty damn obvious you you run an amazing youtube channel great content on feature updates you have your own podcast your own community um you've built i mean one of the largest uh, content creation communities in star citizen you've joined what 2013 you've hit 10 years with star citizen yeah, kind of i i was one of those people on. who 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 backed it and then just kind of like stepped away for a while <laughs> so yeah i was in college yeah. at the time i didn't have star citizen money or time and yeah. i just wanted a new space game yeah. i like you remember yes i mean who doesn't remember mass effect oh, right yeah. beautiful series <laughs> mass yeah. effect 3 had just happened and uh, Star Wars 1313 and Prey 2 had both been canceled. So I was like, I just wanted something space and I found Star Citizen backed it and then put it away. <laughs> right. There wasn't much to it back then. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I totally, I totally get that. Um, but yeah, I remember, I remember Citizen Con. I was there. You were there obviously. Uh, but I remember, yep. I remember seeing you there and didn't want to bother you. You were in production mode and I think your wife was like videoing you and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to at some point reach out to them we'll be on each other's shows like <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely you're gonna have to uh, we got to talk more about that after the show but sure. um citizen con was a good time did you enjoy it it was, was it your first loved every single second of it yeah it was my first so okay. i actually I actually started back in the game um like in 2022 fairly recent only for the past two years um so it was my first citizen con it was actually my first convention for a singular game like i've done twitch cons with amazon i've done plenty of other conventions okay. um, but this was like the full dedicated i guess two games squadron 42 star citizen but <laughs> yeah. we'll get to that for the 
one percent of people who know. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, so it was my first one that's dedicated to a, a game, and like that. That to me, it was a tremendous experience. It's very immersive. Um, it's easy to do whenever it's a solo game that you're looking at. Um, yeah. But it was it was great, man. The content there again. We'll get into some of this, but like the content that they discussed got me excited. Got me like rejuvenated in my creation process uh, so absolutely absolutely loved it yeah that was a serious that was a stab of adrenaline right to the chest for the game <laughs> like it needed it man that was needed the yeah. the the feeling was i mean you were there in person like it's yeah. it doesn't compare to watch it on youtube afterward does it no no it doesn't well the closest thing is that is that video the video the, the one mm. that has like almost two million views yeah. Um, the future of gaming, I think, is is what it's well, it's what it's called. But that does a pretty damn good job of like watching it on repeat over and over again. Like, oh damn, something else I didn't realize. Or the music is yeah. phenomenal, etc. Yeah, Citizen Con was very good. Um, I'm always surprised by how much more hype and interest IAE generates because yeah. I'm very features oriented, and it always feels like people are asking for the features. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's the ships. It's yeah, like, it even is. if you go on Google Trends, normal people who search for Star Citizen on Google are also looking more during IAE. And that's yeah. that's always interesting to me. It It is. And, it, and I've heard it said before that it's a it's a ship game. It's not a space game. It's a ship game. I'm like, well, hold on now. <laughs> like, like that, that's a little bit of a stretch. But it is like the people's passion um, are these ships. You know, they're mm -hmm. happy or they're pissed off <laughs> on, on the ships. That yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm a, I agree with you. It's it's about the ships, but I'm I'm very adamant on the the point that like for a game that is so much about the ships, like they focus so much on the ships in this game. Yeah. It it really says something how much they're also trying to build out like the the character features, yeah. you know. Like they're they're very clearly trying to be like, hey, there's, Hold on, that's not your things. only home. Take care of your body, guys. Yeah. Eat your nutrition. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, I think everybody was really excited to see like John Crew and some of the ship. You know, devs mm -hmm. get up there and talk, and like people weren't so excited about the character development. I'm like, wait a minute, guys. Like, <laughs> this is an entire game that's being, you know, it's doing things that other yeah. games wish it could. Look beyond the ship. You spend most of your time outside of the ship, anyways, in my opinion. What, what I do in the game. <laughs> That's yeah. So. I everybody who watches me play knows that I don't like flying. Oh, <laughs> People don't like when I fly. <laughs> uh, same here, brother. Same same here. It's uh, it's been it's been a rough experience switching over the joysticks. I don't know if you're on VKBs. Like, are you on joysticks? <sighs> no, or? not yet, not yet. I've got a funny story with Hotas, but I'm just on mouse and keyboard right now. Okay, I I probably need to go back to mouse and keyboard. <laughs> Almost killed our entire org yesterday uh, in the hammerhead. But it's good when you like when you go somewhere and mm. you have to play on a random computer. If you're used to like a hotos and then yeah. they throw you a mouse and keyboard, you're like, I'm, I promise, I'm not usually this bad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, at, at the uh, just going back to Citizen Con, they had they had joysticks um, at the yeah. pyro the preview, uh, mm -hmm. not the preview channel, but the I guess the demos. And I tried. I was like, you know what? I've never done this before. But let me get on the joysticks, and it was it was. It was bad. I'm just gonna leave it there. It was, it was bad. I didn't even get You'll out get of there. Hanger. <laughs> You'll get there. I feel yeah. like you like once you get used to them, it's yeah. really comfy. But yeah. yeah, at first you're gonna get a crash a couple times. It's a it's a learning curve. So yeah. <laughs> well, As before we get citizen. before we get too far into like last year and this year, um, mm -hmm. I think it's important for it, potentially there are listeners and viewers who actually don't know who Space Tomato is. Doubtful. I'm sure they all do. Um, but I would love to learn more about you, your journey, however far back you're willing to go, but your journey up to this point, vision, intent, why you're doing what you're doing. And I think for me, most importantly, what the hell is up with your name? Space Tomato. <laughs> Tell me all the things. Well, we could start with the name. Uh, it's not hard to, to remember. That's, <laughs> I think that's one of the best things. It's really kind of a coincidence that it happened uh, the way it did you it it's a tomato so like how deep can it get yeah. um but i used to just be on social media under the name of of tomato i won't give the whole name <laughs> but <laughs> like I, from and since like 2010 i had this name um and i used it a lot and then when i was on reddit i was posting on the star citizen subreddit with some stuff and i realized like okay I, i've started to post with this account why don't i just like 
continue with this name and just make it a little bit more spacey. And what what can you do to make tomato more spacey? Is that space before? So, right. um, I was I you know I went down the list. I was like, hey, super easy branding, right? Bright red. Uh, it's pretty easy to to create stuff for this. Everybody knows tomatoes. Who doesn't eat tomatoes? They're in all dishes. <laughs> and I have a little quirk about them. I'm actually allergic. Oh. So it's fun trivia. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So um, it, it was kind of like a natural thing, I guess. And at the end of the day, it was just I just kind of continued the name I had and wanted to make it a little bit more themed to the games I love. Yeah. So you can't have pizza, like tomato sauce. I can. Okay. Oh, it's pasteurized. Yeah. Yeah. Cooked. Um. Dried. Okay. Uh. F- pasteurized. Whatever it might be. If if yeah. this is for all fruit, almost all fruit. Sure. Something called oral allergy allergy syndrome. I don't uh, die, <laughs> but I get some pretty annoying um, side effects for a week, two weeks, sometimes three or four weeks. Interesting. And so I just avoid fresh fruit for the most part. Yeah. Okay. Inter- I'm actually first time hearing about that. That's interesting. Yeah. It was, when I had it, it was the first time I heard too. And I was like, <laughs> Whoops. this isn't fun. Yeah. I was like 14 years old. I'm like, why is this happening to me? I loved, I loved like, kiwis and pineapples and mangoes maybe that's why i don't know <laughs> it's, it's so weird the human body fascinates me not to get into yeah. something completely off topic but that's crazy no no it's <laughs> the human body man it's weird it, it is um, it is as for my journey to star citizen yeah i actually follow the same kind of path as a lot of other people i am very very sci-fi oriented yeah i love a good storytelling game i love a game with a lot of possibilities but i don't I'm not a space sim person. And I think from like my own polling and stuff, it seems like a lot of other people aren't either. Yeah. Like my callbacks, the things that I would say led me to Star Citizen in terms of interest would be like Knights of the Old Republic, mm. Mass Effect, Halo. Okay. Um, and of course, Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky. But a lot of, a lot. I was a very single player console focused player in the 2000s so i did a lot of rpgs and stuff and i was really just looking for when i'm playing halo or when i'm playing mass effect and i see that planet or i see this i've been hearing this character and i see them flying on a spaceship and like i want to see what that spaceship looks like inside you know i want to go to the actual planet that they're showing me in this cutscene at some point it doesn't have to be right now just like at some point let me do this and i load into a halo 3 multiplayer match I freaking love the map I'm on. Yeah. What is this place? Yeah. Why is this here? And and that's what Star Citizen does. I yeah. Arena Commander recently adding locations from the PU into Arena Commander yes. gives me the literal feeling of like someday somebody's gonna be playing Arena Commander and come across a level and not have tried Star Citizen yet and be like, wow, this is such cool yeah. location. I wish I could see more about this. And they could just be like, hey, come try this game. Yep. And that's the dream. It is. Yeah. And they're, and they're close to achieving that as well. Yeah. Not to get into this topic. I really don't even want to get into it, but I think Starfield was the best thing to happen to star citizen last year. Um, because I think people got into Starfield, they were excited about it and they were like, Oh, but it doesn't do X, Y, Z. I wish it could do, you know, these one or two, three things. And like all of us were like, here's star citizen (laughs) come right on board. And, uh, you know, you can do all that. Yeah. That stuff's, (laughs) I was um, I was really looking forward to Starfield. I started covering that. Well, I didn't start covering it. I started following that game. I think like in 2017 or so. That was actually when I heard about that game. I was like, oh, maybe this is something that I can play while Star Citizen is waiting. Little did I know it was going to be another six years before that game came out too. <laughs> but um, I remember hearing about it and over the years going on to the subreddit and seeing discussion, especially since they started doing the previews in like 21, Mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. And so often the conversation would be people just like, I can't wait for this game. Imagine if you could get onto other people's spaceships. Oh, imagine (laughs) if like, like how much are we gonna be able to walk around our ships? Maybe we can jump out of the door and repair the outside of our ships. People are like, oh, I hope that we can fly down to the planet and land and like take our vehicle off. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> like, please. And then you're like, okay, but like I can show you, I could I could talk to you about it. You don't have to play it. I could just show you that this is something that's in development. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's, okay. That's right. All right. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, it was a fun conversation. I had a lot of friends do the same thing. They're console players, and so they're excited about uh, you know Starfield, 
and I was like, yeah, I guess, I, I guess it's, I guess it's okay. But like Star Citizen ruined gaming for me across all, all games, all platforms. Like I'm a huge cyberpunk fan. I love everything about cyberpunk. It's great. I actually went back and dabbled in Grand Theft Auto Five just because I, I like the that freedom, mm-hmm. which by the way, both don't have load screens. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so. <laughs> So that's a 10 year old game. So I go back, I play these games, but like I'm left wanting because cyberpunk's not online. I can't play it with friends. I can't have multi crew ships. Like that's not a thing. So I'm like, "Eh, that kind of sucks. And then in Grand Theft Auto online, that's a whole nother conversation. Like that that toxicity and that community is just destroyed uh, that online game. But I just, I I can't find the same, uh, and I don't want like white knight on this podcast, but like I can't find the same satisfaction or fulfillment um, that I can in Star Citizen, even through a 10 or 11 year alpha. It's yeah. just nothing comes close, in my opinion. Isn't that kind of funny that, like, you, you talk positive too much about Star Citizen? You feel like you're white knighting. Well, like, I'm sitting yeah. here talking about the positivity, and I'm like, but, but, but there are, like, yeah. there are things, you yeah. know, there are problems. It's not all positive. Right. Um, right. But that whole idea of ruining games for you is, n- yeah. like, I've heard it so many times. It's yeah. absolutely a thing. Because a lot of the time you'll go play another game and you have like two moments. The first is when you're like, man, I wish Star Citizen played like this. Ah, it plays so smooth. The second is when you're like, wow, I wish they took this feature from Star Citizen and did this here. And then you realize you're like, man, I just like if Star Citizen just played well. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. And they're, they're getting there. They, they are and, and actually that might be a good transition into this but um, I, I also have been underwhelmed at the games that are coming out like this year well, well this year being 2023 the games that did come out besides Starfield I'm like they're still missing there's still load screens there's still um, that careful gap. man uh, I, people, people want to say it's the best year in gaming uh, last year, I actually, so yeah. I, I actually agree so Boulder's Gate I think Harry Potter should have been uh, a contender in uh, like the whole game of the year conversation, but you had Harry Potter that was tremendous. You had Baldur's Gate three, like absolutely probably deserves to be one of the better years in gaming, hundred percent. But every single time I went into those games, there was mm-hmm. something missing. Um, Baldur's Gate three is a phenomenal story when played with friends. It's great, but you wanted to go beyond the map. Like you were so it's so linear. Right, like, and I hate saying that. People are gonna hate me for that, but it is. It's very guided. It's like do this, do that. You have a couple choices, but right. Yeah. Um, I love the idea of 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 Star Citizen being open sim. Figure out your shit, and I think you alluded to something very important. You can find your favorite game in Star Citizen, whether it's Halo, the FPS um, structure, the Elite Dangerous Free Fly, the No Man's Sky exploring, like whatever you love in gaming, they're making it happen in Star Citizen. And like, I think that sentence (laughs) helps me be patient 11 years into production. I'm like, you know what? Don't rush it. Because once they go live, this idea of like feature creation ends, right? You'll have a little bit of production each year, but that's it. Yeah, take your. Time. That's that's the thing people think is feature creep, right? Like sure. when they introduce, um, man, it's the most annoying comment when I see people say things like, "Oh, I wish they would just stop adding these, these, these uh, shiny features to make people excited and build yeah. the game." And it's like the game is are the gameplay <laughs> loops, and for the gameplay the loops to work, we got. How could you say that after the year where we got cargo <laughs> re- refactored? Like this is yeah. the whole point. Yeah, and. Like you're saying, they are building all these different styles of gameplay. It's not just, oh, mining is hitting something and then taking it to somebody to sell. Mining is a whole gameplay loop with multiple items and factions and storylines. And they got to do that for hacking and farming and salvage and combat. So, yeah, it makes sense that it's going to take a little longer than you might expect. Yeah. Um, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, you can't understate that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, don't get me wrong. Like, it's taken longer than I think it should have to get to the point we're sure. at. Sure. But, you know, it's yeah. it's not unexplainable. Yeah. Well, and you also had, and, and again, so this is white knighting. I admit to the next couple of sentences. Um, but you also had COVID-19, right? Like, that impacted every studio. Um, I, I've been with Amazon for 11 years. My mentor, head of community for Amazon Game Studios, so I was very close to the launch of New World and the development of New World. 
COVID, COVID destroyed most of the effort, like right in the middle of their launch. Um, and that's not, you know, special or unique to New World. But COVID-19 happened, so, you know, teams dispersed, working virtually or remote, impacted, you know, production. So you've got a whole, like, two years, roughly, of just not a lot, not, not a lot going on. So you kind of have to cut a little bit of slack there as well. But at the end of the day, yeah. 11 years, it's painful. I get it. Yeah. It's also <laughs> still... Everybody's going to talk about how long their game's taken, but it's still a young yeah. company, oh, especially sure. compared to a lot of other game development studios. So they still make a lot of young company mistakes. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of which, <laughs> let's just go straight into it. Um, All right. Yeah. So I think in order to look forward, so the premise of this podcast is looking forward to 2024. In order to do that, we also have to look backward to know where you're going. You got to know where you've been. And I think last year was huge. You mentioned a lot of it, but persistent entity streaming, cargo refactor, salvaging, all these new ships, I think 15 flyable, just crazy numbers. Um, it didn't start off well, did it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the worst start to a year I think we've ever had. Yeah. Well, y- yep. Yeah. The letter that came out that was... I think hindsight 2020 is just very under uh, underwhelming. Uh, but yeah, the letter come out followed by Q1's launch of 318. So I, I just want to pause. I listened to two episodes you having on Abdi Yohan. I listened mm-hmm. to the last episode of you having the Astro Pub. So I know your sentiment. But please let us know your thoughts on Alpha 318. Oh man, <laughs> go. 318 <laughs> was uh, well. I'm I'm one of those players who started. Again, like I said, I picked up this game in 2013. Was it really 2013? I thought it was 2014. But I, I, I picked up this game uh, back, way back in the day, and I didn't play it really that much until 3.0 came out. So I was one of those people who kind of remembers that 3, 3.0 to 3.3 before we got object container streaming, and it was it was rough. That was hard. The game did not play well. Frame rates were like sub 15 for almost everyone, and you were just falling through the floor, and things were falling through you constantly. It's good. 318 was worse. Yeah. <laughs> it was like you couldn't even get into the main menu, man. That was yeah. That was rough, and um, they 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 tried to prepare for that in terms of the messaging, and uh, even they weren't ready. Yeah. And I think that was. That must have been, had to be a big inflection point for them. Not to blame them entirely for everything that happened because this is, they're doing almost R&D on the front line. Yeah. Um, at least from their perspective. But at, at the same time, like they are running and more importantly, marketing a service that plays and allows people to play. And they're very strongly marketed it as playable now during that time. So they can't have that stuff happen. Like I get that it happens because of game development, but it can't happen anymore. Nope. Especially not now. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. how much progress we made from Citizen Kind. So, yep. yeah. So, so for me, I started playing. So, by the way, I'm a nerd when it comes to analytics and numbers. You actually joined August 25th of 2013. Okay, cool. <laughs> I am. I am. I started <laughs> earlier than I thought. Look at me. <laughs> According to your dossier uh, on a. Uh, on on the website so anyways nice <laughs> no okay so going back so i started in 2022 during like invictus launch week so it was the okay. sexy like smoke and mirrors it was on crusader so i was seeing all the big ships and it was it was just a beautiful transition from what i was playing to this right uh um, what were you playing so I was transitioning from new world uh did a little oh, bit right. of dungeons okay. and dragons um like rp or it's the actual D and D campaigns. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was kind of without a game. And so I, I was like, I wish there was a game that did X, Y, Z. And my buddy Conniff from episode one, um, showed me this game. That's a whole nother episode. Go watch episode one. If you're listening or watching, I think it's a fun one anyways. Um, so I transitioned, loved every second of it. And so 2022 was halfway decent. I mean, there wasn't anything that like broke the ceiling of gaming. Um, so I made the decision after eight years of content creation, I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm committing my resources, my time, attention to star citizen, love everything about it. My first episode aired, watch this. This is funny. My, my first episode aired March 19th. Alpha, oh boy. Alpha 318 was March 10th. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's a rough time. I did not know what I was getting myself into. So my first episode was like, I don't know what's happening. The shit's on fire. Like, 
Um, Man, that's a turbulent time to be joining in on that. It was. It was. And so, like, you know, I try to be positive. So I'm like the white knight that's going through 318. Like, it's going to be okay, guys. And everybody is like, this sucks. <laughs> so it was a fun uh, transition for what I was but doing. But the, the sentiment at the time was so much worse than it needed to be. That's, um, that's fair. I, I actually yeah. made a video on that and I didn't do a great job. It, man, it's it's we were talking about videos versus podcasts. One of the most annoying things about yeah. a video is like you can have a really good video yeah. that says a message and then you just mess up on the thumbnail and title sure. and people have no clue what the video is about and it does terribly. This was one of them. I made a video that was supposed to be talking towards the negative sentiment that came from 318 because what a lot of the kind of reaction was, was that, hey, 318 messed up 317, and now it's messing up 319. Yep. This is, updates in Star Citizen are broken. This isn't gonna work anymore. Right. And it's, they've done this before. They've always, they've always pushed updates for tech, and they've stuck to a time-based schedule. So the video was about, hey, this is rough, and it's gonna be rough for the next couple of months, but we've seen this before. It's gonna, it's gonna get back to normal, and we're gonna have updates, but it, it is, hard when things go wrong with star citizen to like put a message out that's not white knighting but also yeah. able to communicate the message that probably should be shared yeah not 100 percent agree with you and i think that is that is a problem that every studio faces like how do you admit or be transparent at the same time you're marketing a damn game Right. Like, yeah. like you can't just sit there and say, you know, everything's on fire. Just bear with us as we, you know, square away some of these assets in the back end because you're also still marketing the game. You're saying it's playable. Right. Like and and, and the uh, the Fortuna event, like there's a whole marketing push of the Fortuna event. That's like, hey, take screenshots. Yeah. And you're like, of what? I can't get it <laughs> of the 30K screen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, so that was it. Was a rough transition. Uh, so that yeah. was that was three eighteen. How how did you come out of it? And I think that's a question you asked uh, Abdiyan. But for you, how did you come out of it? What 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 kept you going? Uh, was there something that kind of guided you out of that mess? Because the rest of the year is something positive that we can talk about. How'd you get there? I think honestly, it was I. I still saw it as positive, man. Okay. Because if you've been here long enough, you've been through bad patches. It's just part of Star Citizen. And like, that was an especially bad one, but to receive persistent entity streaming, Gen 12, yep. the first actual like significant step to the cargo refactor yep. and the first step of salvaging all at once. These are all things that we've heard of. Like every one of those things is something that they have been talking about in detail for at least three or four years. Yeah. So to see like all of this stuff that's so long-term finally culminate into the actual game maybe not in the ways that we wanted them to completely but to see them all come in in the same patch it made sense that it was rough yeah but for me it's always the long term yeah. like even when they release a feature and the feature kind of sucks they release structural salvaging <laughs> and people aren't happy about it but at the right. end of the day we now have three different ways that we can salvage a vehicle and those three ways will allow developers mission makers designers to factor in more types of gameplay into the future stuff yeah. So like I, I understand when a lot of people are thinking about the game they're playing now. That's what they're presenting and what they're selling to us. Yeah. But like I think if you're looking at the game being made, it's not difficult to get through bad patches like that, especially if you can put the game down for a bit. Yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think I think that is the divide in Star Citizen is the short sighted versus long sighted. One one is not better or worse than the other. Uh, but the short sightedness is, hey, you launched uh, the cargo refactor, but where's my Idris? I wanted my capital ship. Oh, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, you can walk and chew gum at the same time. It's not like those teams stop their work. Bonnie Merchman yeah. continuously gets brought up every time there's a patch. Like, why work on this when I still want my BMM? Um, but it's like you need the fundamentals, the things that you don't necessarily, to your point, you don't necessarily, um, you might not play with. You might not need cargo refacting. You might not need persistent entity streaming. I, I, I don't know a lot of people who can explain what that is. You and I can, because we live and breathe it. But if you go to somebody who just joined the game, hey, explain to me what PES is or OCS or dynamic <laughs> server meshing. They're like, they're like candy. Yeah, they're like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, Pez. <laughs> 
Yeah. So like, I think at the end of the day, like you've got to, and this is why I think people like you and me are important to the game. You've got to be able to look at those show notes or the dev notes and say, look, here is the silver lining. Here's what we got through. I mean, hell clipboard. This I'm a nerd um, <laughs> clipboard of like, you still have a printer, man, dude, <laughs> I'm old school, man. Look, look at this gray in my beard. This is like 318. Yeah, I see it. Right I see it. I see it. Where's your pager? <laughs> okay, I'm not that old. <laughs> not that old. Uh, now, now I hate you. Uh, I'm not that old. But like, man, we got through so much last year. So much. And like some of it might not, you know, matter to a lot of people. Um, like the advances to AC, first off, a win in Arena Commander is a win in Squadron 42 and in Star Citizen, yep. right? The more squared away you can get AC, the better the game mechanics are in the PU and, you know, Squadron 42. Yep. Um, which, by the way, let, let me just stop there. You had some really great comments in your other podcast about Arena Commander, but I think that is going to bring a lot of gamers to the, to the front end of this game. I think Arena Commander is it, and people undervalue that, in my opinion. Yeah. People think it's extra. Like, a lot of people wanted it to stop development a while ago. Yeah. And uh, they they kind of kept it around as like, a, oh, yeah, we're testing features here, even though they weren't using it all that much. But right. now that it's, it's a thing, I think people are starting to wake up to the possibilities of it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely what my org nights uh, are kind of probably leaning more towards because you're not losing inventory you're not losing money when you blow up a ship so we're like let's let's go into arena commander and jack around yep. with that because <laughs> it's a lot um, easier that way it is it is so 318 happens we get out of it between then and citizen kind like what kept you motivated throughout last year was there anything like a mm. highlight or to be honest i it was it was actually rough i was mm. probably mentioning every week um, that I was disappointed with how CIG was communicating yeah. um, on live streams, videos, podcasts. I, I was not very happy with what they were doing. And it was it was like a much stronger version of their normal citizen con silence when they're ramping things up. And um, now with hindsight, it's clear that they were obviously holding a lot more back because they wanted citizen con to make a big splash. But there is a lot of stuff that even going back to the letter from the chairman you mentioned we didn't hear a thing about in the first half of last year in terms of it's not happening in terms of here's the progress in terms of what's happening with you know the devs working on it um we only got two sprint reports the whole year so by that time by the time we saw i think it was september we got the second sprint report yeah. so we weren't getting updates on small features or small initiatives um we weren't hearing about the the big things from previous citizen con like investigations bounty hunting gameplay um it, it was just they were very very quiet and they weren't com they weren't following up on things they'd started so the yeah. server meshing part one isc opened up a lot more questions for people than it answered yeah. it allowed people to create their own false narratives on where server meshing was which again comes back to to us who are making content because it's either you got to you got to entertain this and say yeah there's a possibility that um they didn't start server meshing till this year which i think is crazy but they're not giving you a lot of evidence <laughs> to help back you up when you say that's not happening right and then they go and they release this stuff in november and suddenly it's like oh yeah of course they didn't start <laughs> it this year but by then nobody nobody cares we've already yeah. been through the three to four months of gnashing of teeth so it's fair. All of that kind of just combined to make for a pretty rough second and th third quarter. I think it loosened up around September and August. But yeah. those summer months, um, I think really I got by, especially on content, because I just started to do long form discussions about about topics. Yeah. And it's actually one of my favorite types of content now. They're deep yeah. dives into 100%. different features. And I can just pull up all the info I know about something and talk about it. And that's a lot of fun, but I think that's what got me through that period. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, 100%. I, I agree. Bring it on. Uh, I brought on like Star Jump Grim, you know, who's created the Star yeah. Jump to like having those people like, you know what? Nothing's happening in the game. Tell us what you're doing outside of the game. <laughs> These are awesome tools, you know? Yeah. Uh, you just, you had to find your own way to get by. And it was one of the best years of gaming um you know we talked about it mm -hmm. earlier but we had boulders gate to fall back on you had you know all the other games to fall back on as well um cyberpunk right was my like gateway or that carried me my bridge that carried me into citizen con uh was what was uh 
what were your thoughts on Liberty City? Or I always, ah, every time, every single time, I'm literally <laughs> thinking to myself, don't call it Liberty City. And then I call it that. Phantom what were Liberty. your thoughts yeah. on Phantom? Yeah, uh, Phantom Liberty. So uh, the game, um, all right, I was there from the very beginning when it first launched. So mm-hmm. at first, and it was it was miserable. And this is like the yeah. warning that we give Squadron Forty Two: don't release until you're ready. Right? Get it. So I went through that crap. I put it down for a year. Didn't touch it. It was horrible. Uh, maybe two years later, I get back into it, and, and I loved it. I loved every single second of it. They did a lot of patchwork to it, and it was playable. So I actually loved it. Gave it like a nine out of ten before Phantom came out. Phantom comes wow. out, and I'm like, oh shit! Like the new system, how you you know add perks and abilities, attributes, whatever. Uh, but the story and everything else that went to it, I I don't know, man. Like that is probably one of my favorite games up to this point, right? Like, wow, Keanu Reeves did an amazing job, you know, voice acting, and um, oh, nice. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I have not played Phantom it's uh, or phantom liberty yet but um i'll probably watch mrs tomato play through it because she's got to play through it's it's good i know galactic is also playing it as well um it's, it's, it's not this podcast but go play it it's amazing like honestly the gameplay is is phenomenal but again like the functionality of that game and the graphics you look at starfield last year and you're like how how are we how are we doing it this year like how are we launching games that aren't even like close to games that were five years old Star, I mean, Cyberpunk's one of those as an example. Yeah, um, yes, yeah, Starfield. Avoiding the comparison to Star yeah. Citizen, like in a vacuum, Starfield is a is a fun game. Like it's a game I would have sunk a lot of time into as a kid. But I think the main thing that people are are dwelling on, like you're saying right now, is just that it it doesn't feel new and. We've been talking next gen. I mean, we say next gen every time there's a new console kind of coming out or anytime there's a game really coming out. Yeah. But we've been toiling the same circle in gaming for so long. Like I always say that the best best year in gaming is 2007. Okay. And it's very, very easy in my opinion to prove that because we're still making games that are born from formulas in 2007. That's Assassin's right. Creed, yeah. Mass Effect 1, Modern Warfare 2, um, uh bioshock those Uh, games all came out in the same time and i feel like that was truly them figuring out how to make a good action adventure game but we never moved on from that and now to say next gen you kind of have to yeah yeah well and i think that is the best transition we could possibly have going into citizen con next gen all the things that we saw the video that we referenced at the beginning of this podcast dude what what did you come out of citizen con with like what's your gold nugget what is what is the one thing that you're like i am so glad i went because of xyz oh my god well i gotta say at at the end of the day i am glad i went because of the community 100 percent. um yeah oh my god (laughs) it's like the best time of me and my wife's life it was good she she loves halloween and we got back from Citizen Con. She's like, my favorite holiday is now Citizen Con. <laughs> it was just, we had so much fun, man. Converted. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, she, we probably wouldn't have gone unless she had, she it was, she wants to go to those things more than I do. Um, she's a very social party, sure. not party, but like part uh, gatherings kind of person. So she had a lot of fun with it. We went to bar citizens with our community after every night. Um, we hung out at other bars and restaurants with our community. We walked around the show floor talking with like different people that we've known for three years without ever meeting and just like having inside jokes with somebody that I've never seen them face to face. Everybody I talked to that I've had on the podcast or met and streaming, they were all taller than me. What do you know? <laughs> you, but you meet all these people and you're like, you didn't, you didn't look six, five on camera. Yeah. <laughs> now now yep. I see you. Yep. And yeah, just the whole experience of meeting all these people that you've made such good relationships with and like gotten to enjoy and struggle through something for so long with was a good time. Yeah. But the features, man, yeah. the things they showed us, it was the first time I felt like CIG had presented something that looks like a finished game. Yeah. That, that was it, my that main it was point. possible. That it was possible, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I. There's very rare. I look back at my life. Um, there's very rare. Do you get to partake in somebody's passion, like true passion? 
Um, and I think Citizen Con was a good demonstration of everybody that got up there, no matter how nervous they were or whether they, you know, are professional speakers. <laughs> uh, man, they were all, you could tell they were passionate. They, they, yeah. they love their craft. Um, so, you know, like the player updates, the character updates with the hair and stuff, like it might be, it might not mean much, you know, to, to some gamers, but like you could tell that there was a passion and a drive, the best hair ever made in any game. Uh, I think that to me was my takeaway. Community, yes, of course, I'm in agreement with you. The community was phenomenal, um, but I think it's the true recognition that these are human beings these are professionals in their craft that are spending their time like, you think 318 was bad for us can you imagine being an employee at cig during 318 <laughs> right like is there still a game or do we still have a job yeah so i don't know man and then for me i guess the feature wise i'll ask you about your feature here in a second but for me my my watching the demonstration of OCS, PES, server meshing, dynamic server meshing, seeing that all in one take to me was it. Like that, seeing that actually happen, I'm like, they're on it. They, they have done it. They have completed almost the impossible in the gaming world. So that was me. I took away and I was like, I bragged all my friends. I'm like, oh shit, this is happening. <laughs> it's a very important thing for them to show. And the fun. story leading up to that is also interesting. I hope that... Um, I hope in some way we there is more light shed on the journey of server meshing mm. because it is much, much, much more complex than than they've let on. Uh -huh. <laughs> I I've only gotten to see a little bit, but from what I know, um, they have they have specifically hired some people who had technology who had patents on certain things. I know of one person in 2019 who was hired for the patent they had on technology that eventually led to what server meshing does, but they don't talk at all about that, like what was happening in those three years, the R and D of all of that. And I think that's probably really important to them to keep some of that under wraps. Cause that's like for the future of the company and the tech they have and all that. But it's also, I think just invaluably insightful for yeah. people to understand just how much these types of things take to make in games. Yeah, it needs to be people a documentary. Think, yeah, people still think yeah. games are toys. <laughs> like yep. these are these things are more complex to make than movies. Yep, hundred <laughs> percent. A lot of people don't understand that, but yeah, it's it needs to be a documentary that comes out when Squadron Forty Two comes out. Like it needs to be something that is celebrated, um, in my opinion, because that it's tech that we have only dreamt about. Uh, but doing that for a movie, I mean, you could do graphics all day long, 8K resolution. Okay, that's all sexy. But having it work on the back end, you know, where I can drop a box, just for those who might not know what, what we're referencing, I can drop a box behind a tree, log out the game a year later, say, hey, Space Tomato, I, I dropped a package for you. Uh, this grid coordinate on this planet. And sure enough, Space Tomato can fly over, find the box. And it's just, it, it's this amazing idea that everything is... I mean, persistent right no matter hopefully where you if, are and what server so hopefully if that if that server's still working well, yeah. <laughs> i mean there's other things that could happen I, absolutely um i think i think one of the questions i have and then we'll get on to like this next year but one of the questions i have is like the destructible environment it's kind of the antithesis of persistent entity streaming right so like if you blow up a derelict site let's say like that is a destructible environment at what point is it rebuilt? Is it part of a game loop, like a rebuilding? Yeah. Like, like, because it, it is. It kind of conflicts with server meshing and persistent entity streaming. Because theoretically, that their site shouldn't exist ever again because we blew it up. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious about that. Um, that actually feels like I mentioned feature creep earlier. That actually feels like one of the places that we've seen it because mm. we always knew that ships were going to be fully destructible. They yeah. have very old videos of ships being like flaked apart by gunshots as their armor shatters yeah but the idea of all the environments being destructible like that is definitely a change for in from what i know of the vision and it does call into question some things like that yeah. um yeah i i think there's going to be some levels of disbelief we're going to have to have for stuff like that like mm -hmm. when it comes to for instance um resource mining nodes will probably magically have to reoccur yeah. when it comes to these pre-placed outposts they'll probably re randomly be rebuilt 
Yeah. Maybe they can make some kind of mechanic where it's rebuilt over time. But I'm I, honestly, I could just see a refresh when nobody's yeah. around and the shard is uh, loaded off. You know, after a couple of weeks, maybe or a couple of days, they do that. But yeah. you start to run into problems where, like, somebody shows up for a mission and there's no building for the mission to be in, or or yeah. stuff like that. And they're starting to talk about possibilities of different types of instancing, which could work. I think that's very, very. That's a slippery slope. <laughs> We've all joined into this game because yeah. we like the idea of a constant environment, but they do have, like, they're going to have to do something when it comes to destruction. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it, I think it's a good conversation. You said long-form conversation about features. I think that's a good one. Like, what do you do? Do you create a game loop where you have rebuilders? They go and they fix and repair? Like, I don't know, like the reverse salvaging? <laughs> It'd be awesome. Yeah, so. that, that kind of stuff is things I hope that they do like we all talk about and joke about janitors being able yeah. to pick up trash put them in garbage cans to despawn salvagers who can clean up areas around space stations like natural jobs for these game loops but I'm also I also can see how like a game developer would be like I don't want to put that in the hands of players because then we have to account for it and everything yeah so well it's also yeah, that's sexy know. like it's sexy to get into an Idris and fly around and destroy like like that's yeah. the sexy piece that most people are going to want to play not I'm going to pick up trash for an hour <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody out there I'm sure there I'm sure there is I'm sure there is um it, any feature that you're that you're really excited about and then we'll transition into 2024 like what came out of Citizen Con that you're excited about from a feature perspective? Uh, it's two things, combination of two things. One is quantum boost, mm -hmm. and the other is the scanning, which they basically just carroted us with to sell the Drake Cutter yep. um, Scout, which yep. annoyed the crap out of me. But those two <laughs> things, I am I am an exploration and data management person at heart. That's what I've been waiting for. It's what my 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 goal is and to finally see not only the ability for us to travel on the mid distance um but also for us to be able to freely travel in whatever direction we want says a lot about i think where exploration is going in the near term yeah yep absolutely i'm excited about all those all this the star map uh, well i heard you talk about yeah. it with Astro pub but <laughs> the star map needs like i don't know a control a delete uh <laughs> on it don't go back to it i'll definitely don't yeah, go through any extra steps yeah just, right. get rid of it. just get rid of it just delete it um yeah so i'm excited about the same uh let's let's actually get into this year uh i just looked at the time i'm like damn time goes fast when you're having fun <laughs> so i've got a video a to talk about it is it is um and we got two podcasters going at it so we're just we could probably talk for hours so we have a video I took last Inside Star Citizen. I spliced it a little bit, and I've got about a four-minute um, excerpt from Jared talking about 2024. I think it's good to refresh our memories on what he promised we're going to get within the next uh, two weeks. So I'm joking. First half of the year. So let me get into this real quick, full screen, switching over for those of you on YouTube. Let's go. Disco Lando's Star Citizen 2024 guest. Now, without talking specific dates, let's discuss what's being targeted and currently on track for release in just the first half of 2024, starting with Master Modes, the new way to pilot and operate ships we've been discussing since CitizenCon 2952. Now, whether that's every ship or a staggered rollout of groups of vehicles depends on how work progresses, but it's a major change to the way spaceships operate in the persistent universe, and you can be sure that we'll update on it more when the time comes. And of course, when your ships aren't in flight, they can be stored in the newly persistent hangars that are arriving with freight elevators, freight kiosks, and the new cargo transaction system that we've shared on both ISC and this year's CitizenCon. Now, all combined, they form the next major evolution of cargo careers and will also have far-reaching, broader implications for the entire Star Citizen experience. And then outside of vehicles and hangars, there's also a variety of FPS combat improvements coming to the first half of 2024, with improvements to reloading, the weapon wear and misfire system, scopes and dynamic crosshairs and charge and drain, and even more we'll be able to show you once we return in the new year. And then outside of strictly FPS combat, there are new player character features coming, like the updates to the EVA system, the visor and lens system, loot screens, default item interactions in the personal interaction system, and there's even new shopping and mission apps in development now. And while we're talking about apps, 
The first half of 2024 is also currently scheduled to see the arrival of our new character customizer with things like tattoos, piercings, scars, and yes, Virginia, it's true, beards. And as for how many and of what kind, only Andre knows for sure, but you can bet we're gonna ask him sometime around March. And then, of course, if you're in game, there's also a little thing called Moby Glass and an awfully big thing called Star Map. They're both getting their big updates in the first half of next year. And how I mentioned those <laughs> enormous distribution Amen. centers that'll be the <laughs> new microcosm homes for every gameplay and mission feature. That's that the Astro Pub's favorite season, topic. As well as the four, five, six, <laughs> let's just say Particularly the name. Vehicles That's that right. Are making their way to the persistent universe in just the first six months of 2024. I did, just now. I need to check those off. Whew. Okay, so real talk, CIG hat back on. Now, you're probably looking at your screen and saying to yourself, uh, what about Pyro and 4.0? Well, don't fret. The things that we just covered are those that aren't too dependent on continuing foundational tech work like server meshing. So we feel pretty confident in targeting everything that we just shared for the first six months. But when it comes to something as enormous as the complete Pyro system in Alpha 4.0, well, that's where the new preview channel comes into play. Now that said, Alpha 4.0 is currently targeting a summer 2024 release, but that mm -hmm. won't mean that you have to wait until then to play it or <laughs> learn more about it. That's because in 2024, we'll continue doing play tests like the one we just completed, and you'll be able to follow along with its development firsthand on the preview channel. That's the planets, moons, space stations, settlements, and outlaw lifestyle that comes within the Pyro system, but also an entire host of additional new features, content, and quality of life improvements like, oh, I don't know, fully functional jump points, the new quantum travel system, new vehicle HUD and MFD work, resource management, hacking, and much, much more, all being worked on in tandem. The preview channel will let you and us test 4.0 together while maintaining the stability of the persistent universe with all those other great additions we just discussed. And then in the summer of 2024, two become one, and we can avoid that thing that didn't quite go the way that we'd hoped. The holiday live stream? <laughs> and then just because we're cheeky, there are still some things better left for you to discover on your own. And don't forget, we haven't even talked about the back half of the year yet. All in all, 2024 is shaping up to be the watershed year for Star Citizen. And if we've learned anything this year, it's that through the trials of 318 to the successes of CitizenCon and everything in between before that and coming up next, Star Citizen is a project that continues to iterate, to evolve, and to embody an experience you simply can't find anywhere else, whether that's in the universe or within our community that makes all this possible. So thank you for helping us reach the heights that we have and buckle up for the journey still ahead. We're in for one hell of a year. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you. And we'll see you all here next year. Boom. <laughs> I think it's good to like go back to the CIG promise that we're going to get all what this. What a freaking, <laughs> what a hype piece, dude. I know. Oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> Holy crap. I Can I just say before we Please. start talking about this? Yeah. What he mentioned there was actually kind of, I missed it before. Um, he talked about how all of those other things that we're wondering about are, are, or rather, the things he mentioned are all things that weren't tied to tech. Mm. And so they know that they can deliver those and they're going to push those out in the first six months. And that's exactly what they did last year. That when, when all that panic about 318 was going on, yeah. they, instead of pushing out another update to tech, which was like another, uh, um, branch of development in 320 they pushed out 319 so that they could still push out the features that were yeah. based on the tech and it's i think it's really good to see the consistency in how they do these things year after year because when this does happen at some point server meshing won't be the last time they have to put something break game breaking yeah. or like effective into the game we can expect that they will take the opportunity to continue developing the game and adding features yeah. people are always like they have so many delays why are people still interested because the features are still coming in and making things interesting yeah absolutely and before we get server mission we have to do the replication you know layer splitting which they've already said is going to be in a preview channel so like they've learned they're not just going to push replication layer separation in a live patch it's going to be in a preview channel well, hopefully yeah. hopefully 
uh, so it'll be tested there. And I don't know, man. I, I um, it's four and a half minutes, like you said, a hype piece. Four and a half minutes of just Jared going off on. I mean, I, I don't know. I counted. I counted like 35, 35 features um, that they're going to release between now and Pyro, which they're sort of they're soft committing to Pyro being uh, a summer release. This this is I think this is the time if I'm going to be recruiting any of my friends to get into star citizen i think now now is the time what are your thoughts uh on on h1 what has you excited i would i would still hold off i think on on, on recruiting. having my friends come in yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna wait until like it is at that that quality where they can be like i want them to be able to jump in and be like holy crap i'm playing call of duty in space yeah like it should be that That's good yeah. um that being said, I do think like <laughs> half one is kind of leading us to that. Now, yeah. stability aside, let's yeah. ignore stability for now. Server meshing is a thing. Gen 12, the Vulcan API, like there's some things that they're doing to help with optimization. But if we assume Star Citizen plays and NPCs work yeah. and like missions run, <laughs> yeah. um, at the end of the six months, if we get these features, this is going to be one of the most fun games on the market, in my opinion. Yeah. Like... The FPS additions that they're talking about. Um, one of the biggest problems I've ever had with this game, and something I thought that they would try, they, I think they were trying to time this with the new player experience, was the new visor and lens system. Mm. Because one of the hardest things about this game is knowing what matters and what doesn't. They have like street signs that actually tell you where to go, they have objects you can actually pick up. Yeah. But unlike other games, there's no clear system that highlights these things. Yeah. So having a system that like puts an AR overlay on stuff you can interact with, yeah. that on its own is gonna make looting, exploration, it, being in an environment easier for everyone. On top of that, now we have like the ability to custom scan those things in FPS, the default action being just a tap of the F button, like yeah. most games. Yes. Um, like there's just so many things bringing this up to the quality of what you would expect that it, it by six months it feels like we'll be playing a different game and that we say that a lot because it it's, it comes <laughs> off hyperbolic but right now yeah anybody who has uses the current star map knows that to be true yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent i i think i think for me um the the persistent hangers is going to be one of the best things for me. Like, I, I think the game loop of spawning, I don't know, I'm going to make this up, spawning like a Connie, flying it to a mining facility so you can load a ground asset into its garage, that whole loop is is destructive. I don't yeah. even own a Fury because of that. Why own a ship that doesn't have a quantum drive? Because you can't spawn it into a ship. You have to go through a 30-minute loop to get it on. So I, I think that for me, and then I'm gonna say something. I told you, I told you that I was gonna bring up something contentious. All right. DCs, man. The the distribution centers is where it's at for me. We need quest hubs. Like I think that's going to be like if you look at it from a World of Warcraft perspective, Elder Scrolls Online perspective, we need a quest hub. Um hopefully it doesn't bring like pvp griefers but you need a quest hub that kind of centralizes the whole effort and i actually love the name distribution center because at the end of the day that's that that is the game mining salvaging uh trade transport it's all about distributing and fulfilling orders if you will so the whole economy will be in one location every game loop is going to be in one location orgs like soul provision who were literally a transport and trade org we're going to be loving life out of a dc um, so i think those two things in h1 space like this is like in the next six months we're going to be getting these things allegedly um yeah. that to me is a brand new game it's a brand new game uh, i can't wait i can't wait for for this for this half of the year yeah it's a the the locations front's exciting because a lot of times there's a lot of stuff here under the in between the lines too yes that they're not talking about um we never got mining missions mm. it, like talk about scraping the actual bottom of the barrel for stuff that we might get this year mining missions were supposed to come in 319 or yeah, 320 it's good and they never came um and like to put into perspective jesus it's so th i think being a longer term backer of this makes this year seem so much bigger and it made last year <laughs> seem bigger too sure 
But like to put into perspective, we got mining in 2018 and we, it's been six, six years, years, six years. And we never had a mission in mining. Yeah. It's been six years and we've never had an industrial mission until salvage last year. And then, and, and now we're looking at cargo missions coming in. Investigative missions are getting a revamp. Bounty hunting V2s bringing in new missions. They're talking about mining missions. Salvage missions are already a thing. And we don't even, they haven't talked about engineering missions, but oh, we yeah. could just assume there might yeah. be something there too. Yeah. Now they're also talking about hacking being a thing. Um, <laughs> freaking, uh, what's the base building? You know, that's, that's well, a ways that's... out. We won't, <laughs> we won't jump into that, but I just named nine <laughs> different categories. We're going to, yeah. we're getting missions in yeah. after four, five years of getting none yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. besides combat. It's crazy. It is. It's a it's a good time to be back in the game. Uh, yeah, nine different categories of missions, and I have I have a couple of friends that are like, "What do you do in Star Citizen?" There's like no guidance. Well, there you go. You just heard it from Space Tomato himself. <laughs> there's there's yeah. gonna be plenty of guidance uh, here in the next six months, uh, and I actually I actually do want to talk about. <laughs> I, I I do want to talk about that. Um, the uh, what, what was it you just brought up? Uh, the um, the contentious um, uh, sorry the, the contentious topic um that, that we weren't going to talk about what did you just bring up mine um, just completely went blank so did mine it wasn't it wasn't the uh not distribution centers we might just have to move on my mind just totally oh well up. i was i was talking about locations a little bit missions for distribution centers you mean Mm, yeah, that's not it. We'll probably have to move on. There was something that right. you said that I'm like, ah, we're probably not going to touch on, but I absolutely, I, I wanted to touch on it because I think it is a good conversation and now my mind went blink, but regardless. Maybe it'll come back up. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> it happens in podcasting when you record live. Yeah, definitely. Um, but so, so for predictions, I've got a couple of things I just want to lay out there. I'm going to throw my name behind it, throw my hat in the ring. Oh Lord, here we go. So... When do you think Pyro is going to hit? When do you think we're going to see 4.0? Let's start with that. <laughs> it's hard to know. Yeah. You think it's going to be summer? Because it's... No. No? No, I don't think it's going to be summer. Um, I am... I am. Oh, oops. Just lost the light. I am tired of putting dates on things. I put yeah. a date on 4.0, and it's... Unfortunately, it's my most viewed video on my main channel, <laughs> and it's wrong... <laughs> so space like, tomato lies yeah i mean I, <laughs> I i made the prediction as we do and made and added six months to their estimate as we do and i was still um this summer if they do manage to get the date that they're aiming for i'll still be a year early on my prediction and i made that prediction a year before that so yeah i'm i'm not keen to make predictions on server meshing especially because we just needed don't really have good insight into what's going on on it, but I do think that we will be in a server meshed environment by CitizenCon in the PU. Mm. Okay. So whether that's basic, one server for Pyro, one for Stanton, and then uh, nothing else, yeah. or if that's like they're 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 getting like multiple static servers in a system, I don't know, but I do think that they'll reach something in the PU by CitizenCon this year. Yeah. I hope. S- so I'm like, so I'm in agreement with you, like I'll say 75% in agreement with you. So last year I predicted Pyro would be playable and theoretically it was, we played it in citizen con and then the preview channel. So I'm going to like put a little chalk, a little, little check mark, um, for Pyro being playable. I think, I think 4.0 is going to be out this year, but not the summer. I, I, I think it is, it's either the theme of citizen con this year. Uh, like the actual release of 4.0, but I have another prediction that trumps that. <laughs> but I do think uh, I do think Citizen Con or around that time frame, we will see the official 4.0. Summer I think is a little it's a little dependent on how server meshing does in the preview channel. <laughs> if that goes Summer bad, is, we're not going to see it. That's that's optimistic. It is. I mean, <laughs> I think we're is. all expecting the the replication layer split to take a little bit longer to yeah. get stable before that, but yeah, we don't know. Got it. Number two, we're gonna see the Idris this year. I think that's our, I think that's our capital ship. Uh, or that so is, that's our ship we're gonna see. Go ahead. So then you think we're gonna see Squadron? Yep. I'm wearing the shirt for a reason. <laughs> so so here's the deal. Let me go on my little like tangent for like I don't know a minute, and then I would love right. to hear your response to it. <sighs> okay. 
in my gaming industry experience, polishing is about 12 months. When someone says that their feature complete, they go into a polishing phase, usually it's about 12 months. Chris Roberts gets up there and says, we're feature complete, we've been feature complete. So theoretically they've been polishing for a couple of weeks or months at that point. I think the polishing phase is gonna go quickly for this game. And I say that because we have 5 million accounts, not players, accounts, I get it. But we have 5 million people playing this game. They're testing it, they're going through all of the the tools. We're gonna see in H1, all the Squadron 42 tools being actually tested. I think that's gonna be kind of their version of alpha for Squadron 42. Um, I just, I just think this is a different consideration that you can't compare to other games in the gaming industry, my personal opinion. So I think the polishing phase is gonna go somewhat quick. I think Q2 will be the marketing push. Usually you have two quarters of a marketing push. So I think they hit public relations, they hit marketing, they hit legal in the end of Q1, beginning of Q2. I think the theme of Citizen Kind this year is Squadron 42. The way Pyro was for last year, I think Squadron 42. It's going to be 100% Squadron 42. It's going to be a launch party. I think we're good to go for this year. Your turn. <laughs> I worry. Yeah? I, I worry about them trying to plan an event as big as Citizen Con around a game release that might not happen. But I guess by July, which is probably like the latest they can kind of have their plans for yeah. for citizen con they'd probably know for sure if it's going to release this year yeah. i'm a, honestly <laughs> if it released this year and it was ready that'd be the best case scenario but i just yeah. don't see it yeah. um like you said most companies probably do in 12 months maybe of of development i think most companies also probably wouldn't have spent this much time on star citizen and yeah. knowing chris <laughs> uh I could see it taking another 12 months after that. I, I so. am hoping it's 16 from their feature complete. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I just, no matter what, I don't want them to rush it out. Like, 100%. Please take as much as you need. So yeah. if it's ready this year, that's great. But if it's not, then definitely wait. Yeah. I agree with the sentiment. I, I think it needs to be ready. They don't want a cyberpunk. They don't want any of these like horrible, horrible releases. It can't it can't happen or the, the project in and of itself is pretty much done at that point. Yep. Yeah, that's going to kill Star Citizen hard if Squadron does not do well. Yep. I absolutely agree because I do think consoles in the future. I do think Squadron 42 comes out for console. It's a good way to recruit um, individuals into the Star Citizen. We saw it in Grand Theft Auto. We saw it, right? Yep. So. GTA 5 brought in GTA O. Same thing with Red Dead Redemption. So I think it's important. But back to the Idris point, like they just outfitted the interior. So if you uh, if you blow up an Idris, some of them have like in the salvaging pieces, you can see the interior has been worked. Like and there's been a lot of progress on that capital ship. So I think we're gonna see the Idris. I actually also think we're gonna see the Bonnie Merchant Man. <laughs> I know, I know, that's <laughs> I know I'm laughing too, but like, I don't know. You heard, was it John Crew that got up there and spoke at a citizen con? Mm -hmm. it, okay. Yeah. The sentiment there is like, like they're, they're almost taking it personal. Like they're almost like looking at the Bonnie Merch Man as a, as its own piece and like apologizing to the community for not having it done. I think it's almost like personal at this point. They're probably going to try to knock that out, in my opinion, this year. So we'll get the BMM. We'll get the Idris. I think Squadron 42 by Citizen Kind. Pyro at some point this year. Done. Those are my predictions. <laughs> Those are big. Yeah. Those are big predictions. I don't I don't think I have. You're not as optimistic. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have as far out there sure. predictions. I um, told you it would be. <laughs> hmm. What's something that... I mean, ships? they've already gone. Are there any ships that you think are going to come out? Ships. I think Maybe? I think the most contentious ship that I think will come out this year is the Gatak Raylan. Um, okay. I think there's a chance that doesn't come out. They haven't given us an update on if the team moved on to that from the Sentak Yai. Yeah. Uh, but another one that I really would love for them to come out with this year that I don't think they will is the Vulcan. Mm. And I'm thinking that's probably based heavily around drone tech. Now, that is that could be a pretty far out prediction. Um, we know that they had to have drone tech working for Squadron, and that yeah. that means they'd have a basic version working for Star Citizen as of, I think, about a year ago now. Yeah. So there is a chance that we could see something drone-related. 
That'd be awesome. Like I know Carrick owners just perked up. Right, yep. it's the, and the reclaimer. <laughs> yeah, and the reclaimer as well. Yeah. No, that's that's completely fair. I uh, I I got a reputation this last year for like I don't know, like throwing pyro out there. I said Squadron Forty Two would get a release date at Citizen Con. I'm just gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep that little uh, mindset. Makes me happy. Makes my listeners happy. Like I don't know. You get right one of the times. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's right. I'll tell you, one of the things that I think is also a very um, good update this year is going to be the Moby Glass. Yes. Because as far as interacting with the game goes, the Moby Glass isn't super helpful. It's not It's not incredibly intuitive, and there's no good introduction to it. Like, I hope no. with the Moby Glass this year, when they bring it up, when they when they update it, there's, like, when you open it for the first time, it walks you through it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, was it last year they introduced the little guide, the little helper on the... Um the far yeah. right of your screen. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that that's that helps me even to this day. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I could do X, Y, Z. Yeah. So anything that's like in, that would be nice. The, all these kinds of focuses on the base player experience and new player experience should message, should show people that they're focused on getting this up to be an actual game. I think this year, and I think I said it on a podcast recently, this year is Star Citizen's early access year. Mm. This is our Fortnite 2016. Got it. It's like the true I alpha. <laughs> the yeah. true alpha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope so too. I, I do. There's a lot to be excited about. Um, we're just over that hour mark, uh, so I do want to be respectful of of like that expectation. But man, it it's been a blessing, dude. I, I really do appreciate you being on the show. Your insights. Yeah, um, the uh, the fact that you hate my predictions. That's cool. Like, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the predictions. <laughs> we'll just record this. I and, wish they were true. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. At the end of the year, you might be uh, cutting this and uh, making a joke out of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I really do appreciate it, brother. It, listen, for those of you, again, who might not know where you can find more of Space Tomato, here's your plug, man. How can we get more of your content, where you're headed, your vision, uh, everything else? Thank you, for starters, for having me on. I really yeah. appreciate it. I don't get to go talk on podcasts enough, so it was good to yeah, hop yeah. on and talk to you. And I think we have many more hours of discussion between us, so I'm sure we'll yeah. do this several more times. Um, as for my own content, I make mostly videos on YouTube. That's where I focus. So if you look up Space Tomato on YouTube, you'll find me. Probably also find my second channel, Space Tomato 2, which is like long form kind of stuff. Uh, it's deep dives into the feature development of Star Citizen, the history of the game. And I host um, uh, three different podcasts there. Launch Sequence Podcast, which is kind of a one-on-one -on -one like this. Citizen Central is me with four other creators. And then Greenhouse is our community call-in podcast. So we host a lot of different content. And we've also got an org, if you'd like to join us on Discord. So really, yeah. we'll, we're trying to hit all the, all the marks <laughs> and make sure people have all space nerds have a place to go if they like tomatoes yep <laughs> or space or they're allergic to tomatoes uh, evidently yeah. so <laughs> no it's it's really it, it's an all uh, all encompassing uh, community that, that you've developed over there like you won't be wanting uh, whenever you whenever you show up to space tomatoes products so <laughs> thank you thanks again my friend uh, for those of you coming in to the beyond the verse podcast again you can reach us on all socials at forward slash at btv underscore cast email us to become part of the conversation at contact at beyond the verse hq.com watch our youtube videos that's forward slash at btv underscore cast join our in-game organization sole provision uh, that's based off of what we're going to be seeing in h1 so trade transport exploration all that fun stuff i hope this finds everybody well happy new year happy 2024 blessings to you your family your loved ones safe travels as you traverse beyond the verse thanks everybody <laughs>